So hello members and welcome to this YouTube channel, Creative Minds. So if you're new here, kindly subscribe to the YouTube channel. So today I want us to learn about the system flowchart, the system flowchart for Victory School Club membership system. So the system flowchart is under chapter three, the system design. So under the system design is where we have the system flowchart, the entity relation diagrams, the table designs, the input screens design, and the output screens. So we are, I already explained milestone one under my video. If you have not watched it, kindly do so. So, and I told you that I'm going to create a separate video of the system flowchart. So this is the separate video of the system flowchart of the Victory School Club membership system. So first things first, we need to understand what is a system flowchart. So a system flowchart is a diagrammatic representation of the system's algorithm. So a system flowchart is a diagrammatic representation of all the processes, all the process that will be undertaken under your system. So this is a sample. It is just an example of a system flowchart. So it is used, for, I'm using it for explanation. So we need, first of all, you need to understand the different symbols that you can use in a system flowchart. So we have the different symbols. We have these symbols. Yes, we have very many other symbols, but I'm going to use these ones to explain these ones. So I'm going to begin with the first one. I'm going to begin with the first one. This rectangle. So the rectangle denotes a process. So any process which includes a computer process or a formula should be included in the rectangle, the process. Then we have a terminal. So a terminal denotes the start and stop of system operations. So unlike the program flowchart, program flowchart, we realize that we normally use the oval, but in a system flowchart, we are using the terminal. So we take note of that. Then we have the decision. So the decision is used to denote a condition and a condition is a Boolean expression. So for those who don't know a Boolean expression, is an expression that returns a yes or a no. So always a condition should have a yes or a no. So a decision is used to denote a condition. Then we have the manual input. The manual input, it denotes manual input into the computer. And a perfect example of the manual input is the use of keyboards. Then you have the input. So this one is used just the same as the program flowchart. It is used to denote an input. But unlike the program flowchart, in output, we are using a different symbol. The symbol for the monitor is not here, but you're going to see it in our system flowchart. Then we have a predefined process, a predefined process or a subroutine. So a subroutine is a predefined process. It's your procedure or a module. You're going to use it also. Then you have a database. So files are being held in databases. So after entering member registration or club activities, you need to store them somewhere in the file so that you can generate reports. So that part where you store that is this one, the cylinder, it is the database. So it is used to denote the master file. Then you have the manual, manual operation. So just the same as the manual input. Then you have the single report, the document. So this one, as you can see, it is a single one. These are multiple. So when you want to generate a single report in a system, you use this symbol. If you want to generate multiple reports, you use this one. Then you have the delay. So this one indicates a delay in a, in a process. Then you have an on-page connector and off-page connector. So when you have a large system flowchart, so you can connect them on the same page using the on page connector and you can connect them in different pages using off page connectors then we have another part which you have not 
we have other symbols which we have not discussed under their you know system flowchart this one so this one is used to display this one which has a login it is used for display so the information is displayed on the screen so this is what we use for display unlike the program flowchart then we have another one i want to see which one you have not, have not touched on yeah so that those are all that we're going to use so you can feel free to customize this one into your own preference. But first things first, you need to have a terminal to begin your system. So I have a start here. Then I have display for login. So after my system has, has started or after I've, op after, after I've launched my system. So the process of launching is what we call the start, start of a system. Then now immediately after launching, will be displayed with the login screen. So this is according to my system, but you can customize it according to yours. So after logging in, I will enter the username and the password. So after entering the username and the password, so I will wait for validation and validation of details is a process. So that is why it is on a, in a, on a rectangle. So after my user credentials, my login credentials have been validated. I will be displayed by the main form. So the main form, I'm going to create a video of how we are going to create a main form. So I'm going to be displayed with the main form, whereby the main form has two parts. The main form has two parts. So it can either facilitate making entries or generation of reports. So that is why I have a condition is make entries. So we say that a decision is a Boolean expression. So it is a yes or no. So if yes, I will display the student's form. So this is the main form. Under the main form, I can make entries or I can generate reports. So if I don't want to make entries, I'm going to directly to generate multiple reports. Then if I want to make entries, the main the students form will be displayed whereby I'll be required to register students. So I'll have the input whereby student registration, student registration is done by collecting the details, which are admission number, name, class, and stream. So that is a display parallelogram. Then after entering the details, I'm going to save and update details. So that is a process. After saving and updating details, I'm going to store them in the student's database, the student's table. So after storing my data under the student's table, I can either generate the student's report or I can continue. So to another condition, is join club if the students want to join club? Yes. If no, end. If no, we terminate. If yes, the club's form will be displayed, whereby we are going to enter club details, the parallelogram. After entering club details, you are going to save and update details. After saving and updating, you are going to store them in the clubs, the clubs table. In this, in this part is being denoted by the database. So the details are being stored in the clubs table, the clubs database. After that, we have a subroutine, a predefined process of the financial management. So the financial management keeps track of the club activities and the club events. So that is a sub process. So after that, also under the clubs table, we can generate clubs report. So we have we can either generate clubs report or you can go to a predefined process of financial financial management. Then we are going to ask is members update so if the members have updated their details if yes we are going to update details if no we are going to end so that is this is just an example this is just an example of a flowchart i've added few processes so but you can tailor them to more process so thank you if you have not subscribed to this channel kindly do so if you have a question feel free to ask in the comment section below.
Thank you.